right, it's time to turn our attention now to the emotional and social issues of middle adulthood. As a reminder, middle adulthood is the 40s to 60s or mid 60s or so. Um, and of course, we're going to first start our conversation off with Eric Erickson. At this developmental stage, uh, the psychosocial crisis is generativity versus stagnation. And basically what that means is, is that you're kind of like about halfway through your life. You're taking an opportunity to look back and reflect on your choices. And most um, significantly, you're looking at whether or not you have contributed to this world in a positive way and whether those contributions will live beyond you. So you're really kind of looking at it from a broad scope. And what happens here is that folks who are looking back and you know seeing a, p a positive kind of impact on the world are going to feel pretty good like they've generated something they've contributed something and folks that don't are going to feel kind of stuck um, some of the ways in which people can engage uh, you know in the positive outcome is through having children and instilling values in them so that those values are then instilled in generations to come and you'll also see a spike and increase in volunteerism many folks despite the crazy busy schedules that they have will feel a strong commitment to um, helping the community and serving the community somehow. So you'll see a lot of um, folks in the middle adulthood years really engaging in very significant volunteer work, which can help them have a good sense of generativity. Well, let's look at self-concept now. So we started off looking in the early childhood years. The self-concept was high. About middle childhood is when it started to become more realistic. Um, and it became based on that peer comparison model. That peer comparison model kind of stays with us for a long time through adolescence and early adulthood. But by middle adulthood, it shifts a little bit. Now it's kind of freeing. In a sense, a lot of folks are like, who cares what other people think? They're not so concerned about the opinions of others. Instead, they're using an internal um, measure of what's good and bad. And at this point in their life, there's a pretty, hopefully, pretty lengthy list of accomplishments that they already have achieved. And they're kind of knowing that, you know what, I'm not supposed to be perfect. So I know I'm sometimes really in good shape and sometimes not. And that's kind of the, the nature of the beast. So they're kind of at more at peace with who they are. And it's a wonderful time. If you talk to folks at this stage of the game, it is very freeing to kind of shift away from that peer comparison model and use more of your own internal standard. Now, if we talk about changing relationships, one key relationship that changes during this time period is the parent-child relationship. Throughout the years, the child has really depended upon you to meet just about every single need they had when they were an infant and toddler, to then being around and helping you make your own decisions as you started, you know, as the child started to grow up in adolescence and all, but still being there to support them and um, scaffold them. We use a little Vygotsky. And it, despite the fact that you may not have needed to be hands-on all the time, you're still very, very involved. Well, at this stage of development, many parents or um, middle adulthood figures have children who now are going off to college. They might be getting married. So you, you've heard of this concept called empty nest syndrome. Um, it's very challenging because uh, for folks who have really identified themselves so strongly as a mom or a dad, it's not that that role has changed, but the nature of that role has significantly changed. You spent an enormous amount of time really focused on um, you know, child tasks, whether it was caring for them physically, driving them around to activities, whatever it might have been, you really spent a lot of your time. So now you're kind of faced with, wow, now I have all this empty um, space in my life, all this time, might be empty rooms, you know, um, and now what am I going to do with it? So there's two keys to really fostering good um, kind of coping with this. And one is, is that, you know, you need to develop either redevelop maybe hobbies and interests that you had earlier that you haven't been able to do so much because you had a child or you need to, you know, identify some new activities and ways to keep yourself um, busy and active and engaged. And in addition, you really need to maintain that communication with adult children. That really does help the um, transition for the middle adulthood person. Now, we're going to talk more extensively about the sandwich generation, but I want to make sure you understand what this um, population is all about. Um, basically, what we're what these folks are experiencing and what we're describing here is that 
folks in middle adulthood are sandwiched between two generations who have needs. The um, child who still has needs despite the fact that they're growing up, they may have financial needs, they may need you to help them make big decisions about careers and employment and relationships. So they're still needing you and pulling at you in a lot of different directions. And at the same time, their parents are probably aging and may have some uh, or many needs also at the same time. So you may have to kind of take more of an active role in caring for an aging parent. And it depends on the nature of that. It may be that um, you're just having to go food shopping for them once in a while or you have to go and run some errands. Or it may be that they really are not capable of caring for themselves and you really um, have to live with them and do even very basic um, activities for them. You can imagine how this can really be a strain on, on the person because it's a lot of additional stress um, from an emotional standpoint. Financially, it can cost a lot if you need to provide any home health aid services and things of that nature. Um, time is something that you don't always have because you're probably still working and we're going to talk about work in a moment. It may be even um, a pretty intense position that you have. You may have kind of worked your way up the ladder and have more responsibilities at work. And now you're finding yourself needing to take off of work not for a sick child but for a sick parent. And of course, the marriage also requires your attention. So if you're in a long-term relationship or in a, a marriage, you want to make sure that you're giving your partner, um, you know, time and that you you, you kind of make uh, that a priority as well. So there's many different directions. You're getting pulled every which way, vertically, horizontally, and it's, it can be quite stressful. So we're going to talk a lot more about that um, in a message board conversation. In terms of friendships, um, at this stage of the game, you kind of view your family as your priority, and it's not that friends aren't important to you. It's just that if you're going to kind of take up some time in your life, this has got to be a really good friend. So you get to be a little bit more selective. You know, in the beginning um, of adulthood, in the early adulthood years, you know, sometimes friends kind of gave you something to do. You know, it was filling an activity, filling space in your day to hang out with friends. Well, now you you have more than enough to do so it's really just about being there um, and you know kind of trusting and understanding and supporting one another and friendships may take on a different light you may not need to see that person every week or every month it may be that you only talk to them a couple of times a year um, but that when you do you can kind of sit down and really support one another so they still play an incredibly valuable role but it really does look very different from the early adulthood years all right, so I promised to talk about employment before, and you know, what happens here is that during middle adulthood, most of the time job satisfaction increases, and that's usually based on successful experiences. So at this point in your life, again, you have a lot of accomplishments. It's not like you're just starting out in a career. You're probably in a career for a little while. Um, even if you're shifting careers, you have other experiences that you know can transfer those skills into a different area, and you feel good about that. However, there still are um, glass ceilings out there, which means that women, women and people of color or minority status um, are still fighting that fight to try to be able to climb the ladder as high as others. And although we certainly have broken a lot of those ceilings, you know, with having our first African-American president in the United States, um, you know, that was a giant crack in the, in the glass, they unfortunately still do exist. And... Um, gender and ethnic statuses are not all equally on par with one another. Now, a really um, troubling uh, point that happens during middle adulthood is unemployment. Now, obviously, this can happen at a variety of different stages of our life, but during middle adulthood, it can be quite significantly um, negative. And there's a few kind of outcomes that are, you know, not so... Um, you know, wonderful. Uh, obviously, it can impact you emotionally. You can be sad about it, but physically, it can also take a toll on you. The stress can really wear and tear at your body, and it can be quite stressful. I mean, at this point, if you lost a job in your 20s and you could always maybe go back and live with a, a parent or a family member, you know, at this point, you are the primary caregiver, and you may have children depending on you, and you might need to make sure that you can pay the mortgage, and you've already kind of strapped yourself into some kind of lifestyle, and, and now to lose that income is really problematic. And at this stage of the game, it's often harder to find employment than when you're in early adulthood for a variety of reasons. Um, some of it is age discrimination. 
And some of it has to do with you just cost too much to a company. So somebody in their early 20s, they can take a lower paying job because they don't have as many commitments. Um, however, if you were making $100,000, it's to d jump down to $50,000 is really not going to work for your lifestyle and can be problematic. And, and it oftentimes is a pretty significant pay loss with, with the um, unemployment rates. The other issue is, is you're just off the social clock. People expect you to be working in middle adulthood, not to be unemployed. So you, that kind of adds to the emotional um, and physical stress that you're going to experience. And then another piece that I think sometimes is forgotten is the sense of loss of your identity. You know, that's how we usually uh, um, define ourselves. You know, we define ourselves in, in the roles that we play with others, you know, husband, wife, significant other, parent, child, grandparent. Um, and then we also say, I am a, a doctor, a nurse electrician, uh, you know, uh, professor, whatever it might be, you are identifying yourself that, with that um, identity. And now if you're not that, what are you? I'm unemployed? You know, what does that mean about who I am and your identity status? So these are some of the, um, you know, emotional and social issues attached to middle adulthood. I hope you find this chapter to be interesting. I'm looking forward to um, hearing uh, your, you know, um, thoughts on several of these issues in the message boards. All right, we'll talk again soon.